All right, guys, we are back at the channel and we're here with Brian from Parks Express. He is actually the project manager of all the Dayton Audio projects that you have grown to love. And he's gonna come show us some that actually I'm pretty excited about. Yeah, yeah, I, I am too. Uh, come out with this line uh, about six months ago and um, you know, finally got them into inventory about a month ago. Uh, these are actually, uh, we have them from four to uh, 10 inch sizes and what they are, they're aluminum, they're aluminum dish cone and it has an index uh, cone so that the surround actually meets. There's very little junction here and it also stiffens up the cone with the index around the back side. And what are the benefits of that? Um, well, what that does is um, it makes a, a, its frequency response is a lot flatter. Mm. And the way it does that is if there's any type of transition at the higher frequencies from the surround, from the cone to the surround, uh, this is called filleted, where they're filling in ah. the area, right in this area. They're filling in the uh, surround. So it's not actually as like this, but it's more like this. So it's got it angled going down into the cone. Yeah, and you cone. can see it right there. It's, it's yeah. probably gonna be really hard to put up on camera, yeah, but I can probably maybe take some pictures and put that on there because that, that is a really unique design. Yes, and then what you do, you index the cone so this, this meets it almost flush. Got you. So there's no abrupt change. As and the frequency gets lower and lower, it's gonna finally come emanate from coincentrically from the outer portions. And when it reaches that, you don't want to gnaw in your frequency response. Because of the phase, because it's gonna- Yeah, it's gonna reverse phase. It's gonna hit each other. You know, some sound waves are going in one way and another one's gonna be 90 or uh, more degrees out of phase. So there's a couple things that I found really interesting about this driver. One, first of all, I, I saw these on the website and I didn't realize as much that this is a brushed aluminum cone is so it's so much prettier in person than I realized when I first saw it. I was really shocked when I saw it and I actually have some five and a quarter inch drivers so you'll see a project with these actually on the channel. Not sure what yet, but you'll see something on the channel so that'll be pretty cool. <laughs> I haven't decided, but I, I saw them and I was like, wow, these are a lot nicer than I thought. And one of the, the interesting things too is obviously you guys have casted, you have a cast frame here but the frame is almost a unique design as well. Uh, usually I'm, I'm used to almost a flat. Yeah, it has a chamfered edge. Yeah. Uh, so it takes very little bit of uh, countersinking mm -hmm. uh, to make them flush with edge. Actually, these are the same frames as the uh, Peerless uh, HDX series. And you know, uh, if you may know that Peerless has uh, made it so the DIY guy has to buy like 200. Well, nobody's <laughs> gonna do that. So my benchmark was come out with a driver that uh, meets or exceeds uh, the um, performance of the HDX series from Peerless, but make them affordable, number one, and also available because, you know, yeah. nobody can, you can buy twos of these. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm, I'm so disappointed because I've seen some of the Peerless that I like and it's like, oh, buy a quantity of 180. And I'm like, uh, no. I'll yeah, that's not gonna happen. Yeah, no, so these will mount in the same frames, actually. The frame's been on the open market for a while. Um, but what I would like to tell you is this is actually a black anodized aluminum cone. And one of the uh, issues that people say with aluminum cones is that they have a, a, a peak before the roll off in the high frequency. Yeah, right like a large cone breakup. Yeah. yeah. And it's usually due to uh, attaching a, a anodized a black aluminum cone to aluminum former. Mm. What I did here, I did see that in initially, so I changed to a phenolic former. And it gives it some damping uh, in the uh, actual suspension. So there's not hard pressed against the, uh, where the cone meets the, uh, in the center here, where the cone meets the former. Uh, it's actually underneath where you can't see, but it's down in that area. And uh, it's called the triple joint. Um, and so this phenolic uh, former gave it some damping characteristics, which damped that high frequency peak. Uh, and we, you know, lessened it from maybe 7 dB to less than 3 dB. Oh, wow, that's I a mean, huge difference. Yeah, that's, yeah. When you're talking about crossover networks, oh, yeah. 7 dB is hard to deal with. 
Oh, yeah. uh, it's going to wreak its ugly head. You know, you got to get, get far away from it, like a half octave. Um, the, the other uh, things about this has a, uh, it's called a Nomex. Can, can I stop Which you is, just for a second before yeah, you see sure. what I just want to say, first of all, th this is why I enjoy talking to people like you, because looking at this driver, right, and, and you see all of them online, you see all those. Looking at it and looking at the pictures, you would never necessarily pick up on that and you wouldn't have that inside knowledge, which is so important. I think that's the things that we miss in the channel is being able to talk to people and say like, hey, look at just this one little design made all the difference in the world. Yeah, that's that's huge. Yeah, and it is. Uh, and, it, you know, I do have uh, 17 years of experience of doing that. Uh, so, I mean, <laughs> you know, that helps. Yeah. So yeah. you learn from mistakes. You know, that's how you learn. Um, I need to teach my son that. He doesn't seem to understand that. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, what I, I would like to show you uh, is this is actually a, a Nomex, uh, for, uh, Nomex Spider, which is a paraeramid. It's used for, uh, you know, fire retardant breath, uh, vest and uh, suits for like NASCAR drivers oh. and pilots. Yeah. So it's, it takes up high heat without deteriorating over time. It's not like cotton. Cotton's another material they use, but it yeah. doesn't handle the high heat. Yeah, cotton's used a lot in PA drivers, right? Yes. Yeah, and so, yeah. well, yeah. that's that's interesting. That yeah, and it, um, and it, for the back plate So what's, here, so you're talking about the high heat. That's gonna help, obviously, with, with playing longer, but does that also help with the BL curve at all? Um, it, it does. It helps with the, what specifically the KMS curve, okay. which is your suspension. Suspension, yes. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Um, uh, about uh, your KMS, your symmetry. You want good symmetry in your KM, uh, KMS, and it actually looks like a, uh, a a U. And what you want it to do, as a voice coil goes out or in, you want it to tighten up. Mm. It's there's a marriage between the motor uh, ability for the motor uh, magnet structure to move the coil. Um, uh, by energizing the coil with voltage, and you know you you uh, you, you move the coil because there's a fixed magnet. When a you know when voltage goes through a coil, it creates a magnetic field against the fixed magnet. And if it's AC, it's moving back and forth. Mm. And as it moves back uh, far, you want the surround and the spider to tighten up because once it gets too far, it's going to repel. And so there's a marriage between the spider and surround and the motor. Gotcha. So high performance drivers, that's why you see high, high X max or high excursion drivers will have a lot higher surround. So they allow it to go back. They need to tighten up at some point so it don't just throw the coil out of the gap. Yeah, because 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 then when you throw the coil out of the gap, then yeah. that's when you're in all the issues, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's when you, you see it pushed in and it won't come out. Yeah. Because it jumped the gap. Um, and I've actually never seen that, but I know a lot of uh, car audio yeah. guys have, yeah. And um, sorry, I kind of figured it up. But this no. is a stainless steel badge. It's CNC, mm. uh, top plate, back plate, and fluted uh, vent hole. And uh, the CNC is just more or less eye candy, but it, it you know it works. And the stainless steel badging is out or actually countersunk. Uh, about a half a millimeter. So if you take it on a table and you go like this, you're not scratching the actual badge. That's nice. Because a lot of speakers, when you have just a sticker on top or a badge, you'll oh, yeah. take the writing right off. I put a couple down a couple times and it's yeah, gone. Yeah. It's like you know, scratching it. Yeah. Barn it up. Um, and so, this, this is one, by the way, that I think would be really cool. I'm not going to be able to do it, but I think this would be really cool if someone put a plexiglass actual cabinet because it's beautiful yeah. on the back side. It's one of those ones where you kind of want to see, I think. Uh, there's there's only been two drivers I've actually said that about, and they're both dating audio, actually. It's this one and the Epic line. Yeah. The Epic line I thought was also just a yeah, beautiful a fine driver as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Epic, I, I did help with that design, but Enrique Styles is uh, has a patent on that motor design. Mm -hmm. It's called a, a MMAG, and it's mul multiple magnetic air gap. So it's kind of like XBL uh, 2 and, and some of the other where you have multiple gaps. That's why they're able to produce. And I misspoke. I said Epic and I meant uh, the Esoteric line. Oh, the Esoteric. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's, and, I, did have, I did develop that line. That, uh, beautiful. Unfortunately, I, yeah, they are beautiful. Well, on the back end, they're just yeah. gorgeous looking. And I do like the Epic because we talked about that on the channel because of that multiple mag mm -hmm. um, suspension. Like, that's a really cool idea yeah. to help keep BL longer inside the gap, right? Right. Yeah, yep. smart. I'm it's almost like a trade-off. When you have two two uh, top plates, it's like handing off the baton to the next, next person, person and you carry it just a little bit farther. It, it reminded me a lot of what 
Purify did a different different way of different doing way. it, but but the same basic thing. And and I I look at that driver and I keep thinking, man, the performance for price of that versus something like the Purify is just insane. I, I love the Epic because yeah. of that. And you know they're both fine drivers, but mm -hmm. keep in mind I think the Purify uh, when I checked I think it was uh, 11 point something millimeters X max. Uh, the five and a half and the uh, uh, seven inch Epics have 14.7 millimeters and at they're 82% VL. Considerably cheaper. You could buy yeah. like seven of them. And yeah. <laughs> I'm just not, not really known because... for that. That's what we do. Um, what I do is my uh, thought process is always when I develop drivers is to uh, cater to the DIY mm -hmm. market. Yeah. So I've done uh, many things in order to, uh, I come up with the designer series. So, uh, you know, you can cut a hole and then it covers any any mistake you made it's kind of like a ceiling speaker where you have this big cover and you can cut it with a steak knife and put it over and it looks <laughs> yeah. nice yes it's a, it, it's a trim piece that goes over and um, so you, what I want to do is try to make uh, even the uh, beginner you know speaker builder sit back and look and say wow I only got a couple hundred bucks in it that sounds pretty good my friends are saying because we want to grow this DIY market and, and I want to say this too because you guys have been doing something that I've been really appreciative of because when I, another passion of mine is cooking. I like to cook. I'm not great at it, but I enjoy it. And one of the things that you always hear when you're cooking is you don't eat with just your mouth. You also eat with your eyes. Like if the food looks good, it also ends up adding to it. Yeah. And one of the things that you guys have been going above and beyond recently has been the looks of the driver. So this aluminum, this brushed aluminum cone, and then not only that, not having the dust cap on there, just doing that parabolic shape. You did that with the MX-15 and the MX-12 and the MX-10. I love that look. I, I don't, I might be like one of the few people, but I absolutely love it. For some, a lot of speakers, when the dust cap is on there, it just kind of cheapens the look sometimes. Yeah. And I think that this looks very, very nice. It yeah. looks high end. And the Max X is also the, the MX line. Yeah. That is one I started from the ground up with. And I, uh, you know, I thought for a stamp steel, it looks like uh, once you mount it, you can't tell if it's aluminum, cast aluminum or stamp steel. Uh, they're, uh, low price, but they have a lot of good uh, attributes. They have that high profile sub. It's called um, Optimize SD. And what you do is you move just like this one, you, instead of being uh, totally symmetric mm -hmm. surround, it's actually leaning toward this side. So you're actually getting a little bit more SD, more surface area. Oh, really? And anytime you increase surface area, then you can increase your SPL. Yeah, and so what we're we're talking about is we would take surface diameter and we'd multiply that by our X max, and then, and then we would be able volume. to. Yeah. yeah. And then we get our then we get our volume to how much air it's actually moving. Right. And so if we can increase the SD just by changing that surround, then that 15 inch subwoofer even if another one creates the same amount of x -max, is going to actually produce yeah. more, more, and, air, you know, more air. Every little bit helps. It's oh, not yeah. major, but every little bit helps. I, I will tell you, I actually built some, and people that have watched the channel know I built a subwoofer, the MX-15, and that thing is what I believe is probably the best value subwoofer on the market because it just blows away all the other 15s. I, now, I have never built anything with the Ultimax, but the price difference between the two, and I'm not saying anything bad about the Ultimax. I mean, once again, you're talking about aluminum frame versus a cast frame and a couple other differences. But man, that MX-15 is such a good value. I can't say anything actually, bad about it. And I actually uh, like the look of it. I was just <laughs> looking at that the other day, um, is that the, uh, the, uh, the Max X series, if you look at the reviews, mm -hmm. uh, I believe there's right around uh, 12, 13, and 12 for the uh, 10, 12, 15. Uh -huh. and, uh, and they're all five stars, and each one of them have one four, four star. It's Everyone the, loves that. They, they say the same thing. Yeah. The best value, you know, the 10's like $99. It's, I mean, what, what speaker can you buy for $99? It really actually puts out a lot of bass. And uh, that's it, yeah. And so for me, like if I- Five year warranty. <laughs> and if someone said, hey, look, I want to build a value subwoofer for my home theater or my car, I, that's the first one I send them to is the yeah. MX series because I, I just feel like that is, in my opinion, one of the best values out there right now. Yeah. And there might be something better, but I haven't I haven't found it yet if there yeah. is. No, and I, I believe I, I really like those. I, I'm really proud of those. Uh, I will want to tell you that the, we have these uh, drivers with the, uh, you know, with this type look and these type of terminals, gold plated, um, 
in four, five and a quarter, six and a half. Mm -hmm. And on the water right now that we're is gonna it? have is the 10 inch, eight and 10 inch, which has a bump back plate. Ah, and, and you still inset the, yeah, it's still that's inset cool, the, yeah. that's smart. And do a polluted CNC cut, CNC, CNC, a um, little bit eye candy. Sorry about the, uh, you know, this week we got out of the lab and it's been all fingered up, but you, <laughs> if I had time to clean that before I was asked to come out here, uh, I would have done so. They can clean up real nice. Um, but yeah, real proud of these. Uh, they have, this is actually 93 dB efficient. 93? Yeah, so, and it has seven millimeters at excursion. And are they and eight ohm or four ohm? It, the, these are all four ohm. These are four. So really, I mean, that's that's pretty amazing. A 93 at four ohm, I mean, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and they have, uh, you know, actually gold plated binding posts. Uh, like I ten. like that, yeah. They have the bump back plate and the gold plated binding post. I do like, I like the gold plated binding post. I mean, I'm a big fan of the spring loaded binding post. I, I mean, granted, it, it doesn't necessarily, I don't know, I like it. Is, though, the four inch that got away, I wanted to do binding post on all, yeah. but the four inch, the smallest driver in this series, it, you couldn't mount it without. Without, uh, yeah, without passing. cutting part of it out. Yeah, cut it. I want to tell you that I'm really happy that you didn't do that because uh, I've, Peerless especially is known for that. Like especially uh, their their tweeters when it's oh, right yeah. on the edge and you're like cutting it out and you're like There's please no circle to it. You have notches. Yeah, you, you know. have those notches. That's a pain to cut out, man. Right? Like I mean, for a lot of DIYers, they just want to cut a circle and another circle and be done with it. And then you know when you do, it's not that you can't do it. It's just it's another right. step that you don't necessarily need to take. And I think I mentioned that I uh, my whole premise about any project is. Uh, that I cater to the DIY. I, I like that. And because uh, even though I have some, uh, you know, like ribbon tweeters, GRS, mm -hmm. I do the GRS line too, the entry level line. Um, but it, the ribbon tweeters, uh, when I first seen them, they came with a frame that had like an odd, like Shape. four, six, uh, four seventeenths or something. I mean, something really weird on the, uh, the actual it was in millimeters. So the inches wouldn't uh, add up to making a corner, you know, the rectangle shape. Yeah. So I had them change it to you're taking, a quarter inch radius. Yeah, you're talking about like when you go around with like your router or whatever yeah, to make so you the, can make yeah. a you can make a rectangle yeah. block and just take your router and go the rectangle and you'll have it perfectly. And, and that's fit. become a problem because I've actually used some uh, some horns that have that weird thing. And unless I'm using the CNC router, it's like, yeah. oh, I don't know what the, yeah. So it makes the DIY, make it look professional for the DIY. And the reason why is we have, we, you know, if you don't mind me uh, mentioning, take a little time here, but no. we have a little bit different uh, business model. A lot of speaker companies like Eminence and uh, the others, uh, they'll, have OEM, you know, they'll do OEM projects and pretty soon they'll have them for sale. Yeah, so we they'll, they'll cater to the line. OEM first and then if yeah. they have leftovers. Yeah, goes, or if that OEM no longer wants it or if that OEM uh, has no problem with you selling it on also to retail because they're putting it in a system and nobody knows. That makes sense. Yeah, so, but the way I do it, I come out with a line of all my drivers and hoping that I cater to DIY so the DIY guy is going to give me the first um, reviews. I want them reviews to be stellar. Yeah. And if they are, then an engineer at a place going to say, oh, they got some new drive. Wow, this guy really knows what he's talking about in his review. And he gives it a five star. Maybe we should look at these. And what I end up doing, spending half my time doing is working with commercial customers mm. on other drivers I've done to modify it to what they want. Like yeah. we may change anything on this. So change some of the TS parameters to meet yeah. what they needed we'll to do. We'll put a logo in here, yeah. we'll put a dust cap No, don't do that. That's that, not, yeah, no, yeah, don't yeah, do that. Not to that not one. Not to that. I don't but, care. They just they refuse it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Have, <laughs> you know, people that want to see Dayton audio across here. And I said, no, I, uh, I would rather, yeah. here's why, is because the small OEMs that we grew over the years mm -hmm. turned into big OEMs. And the reason why is they can buy this speaker. Once you put this in a cabinet, they can think it's Dayton audio. But, but if when it's in that five thousand dollars speaker pair, they don't know for sure because it's just plain black. They'd have to take it yeah. out and look yeah, at it. Unless, to, and, and, then, and then you might not even have it marked on the back if they exactly. don't want it. If they don't want it, yeah, we'll do their badge and their logo. Yeah, and that's smart because I, so when Dayton Audio, I don't know, nineties, two thousands around there, they all they had that big D on like everything, right? The, the big D on it, and then. 
it kind of it's kind of cheesy now, right? Like, like, like I, I'm trying to be honest. I mean, of course, it was probably oh, cool good. back I'm in the go. '90s or 2000s, but nowadays, like, I like the clean look where someone can look at it and they don't know, yeah. because when you build a good set of speakers, and we see we see it at the speaker competition right now, when you're building a good, beautiful set of speakers that are OEM or that that have these drivers in there, you don't know that they are yeah. necessarily DIY. Because these speakers that people are bringing in are gorgeous. Yeah. And you look yeah, at it, are. and you, yeah. you look at it and you say, man, I don't know what driver that is. I don't know who built it. And I, and I like that because when you start putting logos and stuff around it, I feel like it detracts from what the actual speaker looks like. And even to a certain degree, what it sounds like because you're focusing on things that you shouldn't be. Yeah. Yeah, and I agree. And Vance, even uh, Vance Dickerson, which I think everyone knows, yeah. um, is, uh, he told me that you know, a lot of these guys out here are this close to being professionals. Mm. You know, some of these systems and stuff, yeah, they're real. And they, you never know at their age, you know, get a little bit older in 10 years, they might be a professional. Absolutely. And what we do is, uh, by doing this, we, we allow the OEM to buy 10 of these, 20 of these, and we see, you know, in my 28 years here, I've seen little customers turn into big, and you know, now they're buying their own. You know, yeah. uh, you know, 500 units. That's gotta be Not exciting to see. Yeah. yeah, you know, and so they grew with us and that's what we wanna see. And that's why we wanna keep this DIY market alive. So I'm gonna do everything I can to uh, cater to the DIY market, bring in great values, and, uh, you know, we did the testing products, the DATS, the Omnimic. Ah, I love DATS and Omnimic. Yeah, and the, yeah I, I love DATS V3, one of my favorite yeah. systems. I, in fact, every time anyone asks me what's the best value testing equipment, I always say DATS V3, get yeah. DATS V3. And I'm not saying that a measurement mic's not important, because it is, especially if you're going to be designing it. But DATS V3 can tell you if your tuning frequency is right. It can tell you your capacitor is right. It can tell you if, I mean, I, I, I was built a- Invaluable a, tool. Invaluable. I, I built a crossover the other day and I was playing and no sound was coming out of the tweeter. I said, what the heck is going on? I know I built it right. And I was looking, looking, the capacitor was bad. So it wasn't allowing anything through it. But I wouldn't have known that yeah. unless I had the desk. You, I, you, I would have been replacing every part one at yeah. a time until I figured that That's out. That's what we do for uh, a lot of known speaker companies mm -hmm. that buy crossovers from us. Yes. I'll have a file where it shows what the impedance graph should look like. Ah. And then when we get them in, I'll test a few of them. And you can see a short or an open. So test it against know, the reference, Yeah, it's right? going to yeah. go infinite or to zero. Yeah, that's and, smart. And it's easy to tell. And you can tell what, uh, by the shape and where it's at on the curve is probably what the uh, component that is. And if you are getting into the part where you're starting to manufacture and sell speakers, like that's an invaluable tool because once it's all built, once you have the crossover in, like you said, you should have a reference of what your ZMA, what your impedance should look like, okay? I call it a ZMA, guys, that's what you say yeah, it as. ZMA. But you should have a reference of what that looks like and you can easily hook up each one and know if there's an issue with that crossover right. before you sell it to someone. Immediately. Immediately, yeah. yep. And, yeah. and I know, and that's the first thing I do after I beat, after I complete any of my speakers and I put my crossover in, the first thing I do is I look at that impedance graph to make sure that it matches up because if it doesn't, then I got an yeah, issue. Then don't put it in. You yeah. know, I mean, or, stop there. Yeah, yeah find or out. I, I have a hole in the cabinet yeah, or you something. You don't want to find out after you shipped it to somebody. No. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I'm saying a hundred. It's like 130 bucks or something like yeah. that. It's so. And Vance good. actually said, and when he reviewed it in Voice Girl Magazine, Vance Dickinson, he said it, it's practically the industry standard at this point. We have sold over, I'm sure, over a hundred thousand. Not the V3, but the WT2. Yeah, although he's. The and, sequence. And for anyone that doesn't know, that's, I mean, it's its just become synonymous now, but it stood for, and I think it still stands for, Dayton Audio Test System. Actually, sorry. No, it's, it's I'm wrong? Digital Audio Test System. Really? It Dayton wasn't Dayton Audio? Audio? Was, yeah, because then it was uh, Dayton well, Audio, Dayton Audio Test System. Ah, that's it's true. Dayton yeah. Audio Digital Audio, audio test, test System. Ah. Sorry, but I mean, no, I, I learned something new. people at work that I work with for years huh? that still think it's Dayton Audio Test System. I, I gotta be honest, <laughs> I've, I've called it, I've called that's Dayton Audio Test System for years and yeah. no one has ever and corrected I, I me until someone that actually knows it. Yeah, because that's, I, <laughs> 
<laughs> you designed well, I it. Named it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, but, you would know if anyone knows. Uh, well, I'm glad I have I'm to give corrected. credit to uh, John Murphy, who does wind speakers and True RTA. Yeah. He is the uh, brainchild behind that. Um, I was contacted uh, maybe um, 14 years ago uh, about if I knew anybody that could do this product for yeah. us by my manager at the time. And I, I said, well, I read this book uh, from True Audio and read this book from John Murphy. And I said, man, it really enlightened me on stuff that I, I read before in different books, but finally he had a different angle. So I said, let me call him. And now John will even tell you, Ryan, I never thought in a million years that this product would be so successful. So, now I gotta ask you, um, Bill Walso does Omnimic, right? Correct. Is that right? Now, okay. So Bill also does Omnimic, also a very, very great product. The Omnimic, in my opinion, I, I always tell people this because there's a lot of inexpensive microphones on the market. You guys sell some to yourself, like the EMM6 and the, the UMM6 and all the other, even the, the little one that you plug into your phone, I can't remember. The IMM. The IMM, yeah. So, and then there's like the, you know, UMIC one and all these other ones. I've used a lot of those and they use Roo. And there's nothing wrong with Roo. I have no problem with it. Right. It's a very powerful system. Very, very powerful system. But the ease of use with using the Omni mic to me has saved me so much time that I always tell people like, hey, if you're serious about this, buy the Omni mic. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're just getting in, you're like, I don't know, then go get, go with the UM6 or something. But if you really want to get into this, you will save yourself a lot of time and hassle just using the Omni. I mean, the Omni mic picks the right track for you, just starts doing it. You know, I, I don't know how many people that I've actually seen use the wrong track to take the wrong type of measurement, and then, you know, they, their results aren't quite as accurate as they should be. And if you let it do it from the sound card, it'll automatically pick the right track for you. The Omni mic. Yeah. The yes. Omni mic. yes. I know. That's what I love yeah, about it. it. You can't go wrong. You, you can't um, mess it up. Well, now, you, you can't. I will mention <laughs> to you that the Omni mic has been discontinued, the V2. Ah. And the reason why is I had them do one last buy of the chip, the AK5371. Um, about two years ago. And I said, please, because they told me it was discontinued, they couldn't make it. I said, please make 500 more because I'm working on another product. And this is why I mentioned before the end of the year, I should have the Omnilike 40K. And it's going to go to 40K. Nice. And it actually has a uh, actual phase feature. Really? And what it does, it's called the photo link and it comes with it and it has an IR sender. And it's also a voltage detector. It's a little box. It's the same size as the DATS, same enclosure as the DATS. Okay. And so just that little black yeah. aluminum box. So it has two leads that come out, the same test leads. Okay. Hook up to the driver under test. Okay. Okay. And when you give the driver under test 2.79 to 2.87 volts, volts. Yeah. It the light turns green. Oh really? Yeah. So now so you know you're at the sensitivity. Yeah, you're in the sensitivity range. And and now uh, what it does is when it does the sweep, the short mm -hmm. sign sweep, it actually flashes that uh, IR, and the IR receiver's in the mic, the 40k mic. That is awesome. So you get actual phase and the. Um, you know, there was an argument between minimum, everything uses minimum phase, which is derived from the frequency response. Exactly, yeah. But when Bill would write up, he wrote me a white paper on, you know, I said, well, which one's better? He said, well, obviously, actual, actual phase, phase is, is better. better. Yeah. yeah. So anything, you know, you test with this system, a tweeter and a woofer, you know the difference. Now, so then you, you actually know the actual phase. Now, the other cool thing, if I understand correctly, is because you can now measure up to 40 kilohertz, that means you can now get distortion up to 20 kilohertz now, right? Correct. Because before you could only get yeah, distortion up to 10. Yeah, it's Nyquist therm, you know, more or less. It's a half the. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be huge for people that, like me, that really pay a lot of attention to the distortion in a driver at different volume levels. Because, yeah. I mean, I don't know how many drivers I've tested, and uh, one in particular that I remember testing, the distortion looked really good at like 85 decibels. And then I turned it up to like 95. I was like, oh my goodness, is this the same yeah. driver? Like, what just yeah. happened? And it, it was, I mean, it, the distortion, even the graph looked completely different. It wasn't like, a lot of them are, are a little bit more linear, but this one just all of a sudden just blew up. And I'm like, yeah, someone will do that. Yeah, there is one last product that I want to bring up, and that is, uh, the IMM6, we do have that. Uh, we use that in, uh, 
you know, many people have used that in different uh, applications uh, with, and it always came with a TRRS uh, analog. You know, yeah, and that's that's always what kept me from wanting to buy that because it's it gets kind of expensive to switch that over and yeah yeah, yeah and the ca connectors and cables uh, and a then you have it everywhere yeah. yes and so um, with the uh, onset of you know um, iPhones moving to USB C uh, we've seen the need for a USB C mm. type device to go to Android and the iPhone. Uh, and it's a calibrated IMM6, everything the IMM6. So are you has. saying that you can actually, you'll actually be able to use this with software on the Android phone? And yes. Wow, and, and on iPhone. Yeah, yeah. So you, not only computer, but now that's, that's, that's yeah. gonna be, that's, that's gonna be, well, so how much right. is that gonna be? Uh, we're looking at now, don't hold me to it, we're hoping for sure. uh, 2995. Holy cow, that would be a great deal if you yeah, could get... And it's a calibration, you know, that calibration file, I don't know um, if they heard about you explaining about the... The calibration? Yeah. Yeah, so basically what we were saying is uh, in order to, to get a microphone, like all, all microphones, no microphone is calibrated from the factory. You have to buy a microphone and then make sure that it measures flat. And so you get a calibration file that's specifically designed for the microphone. It has well, like a serial number or something. You go to Dayton Correct. Audio's website and you download exactly. that file and it's downloads on your computer and whatever software you're using, like Rue, for example, it asks you for that calibration file. You just upload it, select it, and then it starts measuring. So what you're measuring on screen is exactly what you're hearing. Correct. Correct. And, and it, it's worth its weight in gold, really. I mean, you know, it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's definitely a uh, game changer when you can get a, you know, a calibrated mic, a precision mic measurement microphone for under $30 that works with iPhone and Android. I think we're going to sell a, a, lot, a lot of those. And, and that is going to be especially good, and I think you had mentioned this, in the car tuning frequent, in the car tuning industry. Yeah. Yeah, if you look, there is, um, you know, we've already done some with uh, some of the big companies in car audio. And uh, we've done it with elevator companies. We've done it with, uh, you know, airports. They changed their approach and people wanted uh, documentation for the airport to say it's too loud. Oh, yeah, that's and, smart, yeah. And so they, they can't just say it's too loud. They have, they to, have to have data. Yeah, because it has to measure the actual SPL, right? Yeah, yes. and so what they have all their neighbors on the approach and you know, they can tell exactly, it's almost like triang triangulating, you know, you can actually see where their lower DB, so it's closer to your house and their house. And what they do, they subsidize, like O'Hara, they'll subsidize the people, but you have to be able to prove, prove it. Prove that it's there. Yeah. Uh, so you need data. Well, I'll tell you this, like the two microphones really make me excited because one, we have a $30 microphone that's gonna work now with, which I could see you owning both the $30 microphone and the Omni mic, because the $30 microphone is gonna work with your Android Auto, I'm mean, sorry, your Android devices, your- um, portable, uh, portable. Yeah, any portable device, and then also this, you know, also your computer. Um, for me, the Omni mic is the one that I want for like speaker designing, mm -hmm. because that has all the other features that you talked about that just are super exciting. Right. And then that IMM6 though, I mean, that sounds extremely powerful for the price. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would like to mention one other product. No, go ahead. We have, a, I think it's on the banner on our website right now, if, if we're talking uh, relatively live, it should be up tomorrow and such. But it's that 300EX, the bass shaker. <gasps> I've been very interested in that because that looks like it could compete with something like a butt kicker. Even though I know butt kicker reacts like acts differently. Yeah, it's it more does. like a piston, right? And yeah, it's actually a, a, it's almost like my magnetic ride uh, on a, a Cadillac. If you're familiar, what you do, you have two opposing magnets, and then this by by taking an AC current through a coil, it moves the magnet toward one and toward the other. That's what a butt kicker works. Yeah, with. and I, I've I've used butt kickers, and I. I'm not really a huge fan of the butt kickers. I feel as if they're almost too violent at times for some reason. But I use your BST ones uh, in a racing simulator and on a couch, and they were amazing. So then when I saw that this one came out, because this is basically the BST one on steroids, right? Yes. It's it's like it's. I went to instead of a three inch coil, I went to a four. Oh. And uh, what I found out, I said, well, I'm going to approximate with a four inch coil being that you know that much, uh, that uh, diameter wire and uh, the heat dissipation. I'm, I'm saying, okay, it's a good, at least 100 watts RMS. Well, 
I measured it at uh, 39 volts, four oh, ohms. So it's actually it's actually near 400 watts. Wow. And actually, the butt kicker was 41 volts. Oh, so right, right down. there, wow. Yeah, so it's right there. And we overlaid, we have a uh, base shaker, that uh, a base shaker testing jig. And what it is, it's 97 pounds of concrete suspended. Mm -hmm. And we have an accelerometer hooked up to a, a, a wow. Omni-Mic um, custom So you can actually software. tell how much vibration is going through the concrete. Yeah, it has to propagate through the 97 pounds of concrete. It's a lot. So you're eliminating any ambient noise, air conditioning, you know, it's got to, um, and we compared it um, with all the, every uh, base shaker we had, because I went Because you had the, the you had the, it starts with S, what is it, Sign? No, not Sign, um, Sonic. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, there's uh, the the I beam. Yeah, the I beam. Yeah. yeah, there's a Sonic Splash. The I beam, which used to be by Rockford Fosgate at one time. Oh, did okay. Yeah, I yeah. wasn't sure about that. We okay, had the yeah. I beam for a long time, um, and then we of course have the butt kickers. Yeah, and we have the Aura. Oh, the Aura. Yes. Yeah, yeah the Aura, which is basically the BST. Yeah. Yeah. And what we do, we plot them all on the same graph. Okay. And we can overlay and see where the peaks and, you know, where they're best at. So you're saying this got the most vibration out of all of them? No. Oh. It was under the butt kicker, but it's $89. Oh, it's only 89 the, Yeah. yeah butt kicker's like three something. Yeah. yeah. 229 289 Yeah. Depending on which one. So bang for the buck wise, again, that's Dake Nadia. Um, you know, this is a great value. It, it's made more for like a platform. Like let's say, you know, somebody has a nice home theater and have three seats on a platform. Yeah, so you, you can, can build it into the platform instead of putting it on your couch itself. Exactly. Which is And then if the, if the center guy wants, you know, if that's your main listen and you like a little bit more rumble, and <laughs> these guys, you know, maybe less and then less, All right. you'll almost propagate the wave from the center and move out. I have to ask you this because for the BST1s, you guys ended up selling an amplifier made for the bass shakers, which I actually really liked. I really enjoyed. It's the first amplifier that I could ever think of that was actually designed for a bass shaker, which made a big difference, especially having that volume control by the couch if that was for you. Mm -hmm. What is the power for the, because that's a lot of, like you put three or four of those on there, you're looking at 900, 1200 yeah. watts, right? Yeah, and you know, I thought about that, Yeah. and we don't have a solution yet. Okay, man, right. I, was, I was hoping yeah, that yeah, you guys, yeah, yeah. you're like, <laughs> actually, <laughs> okay. actually, I have to give uh, our president of our company, Jeff Stahl, credit for that. Mm -hmm. He's the one that demanded that we have a bass shaker amplifier, and as you said, it has been real popular. You know, he was spot on for that. It, it was huge. Like when I first installed mine, I was like, this is like all the difference in the world. I mean, I, I used a regular amplifier for a while. The only thing, you know, if I, if I were to give constructive criticism, the only thing I didn't like about it was the screwdriver terminals as far as like turning up and down the frequency and mm -hmm. the volume. You know what I'm talking about on the front. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't really like that. It reminded me of old car audio amplifiers. I would rather have something that I could physically grab, yeah. grab, make it easier, just to fine tune things. But if that's my only gripe about it, you know, like I'm doing pretty good. And what we do is we, we try to get something that the, an OEM can buy and somebody not mess with. So they can tweak that to their system. And then, then, and then, yeah, either put a cover over or never tell them it's there. Yeah. And then the, the end user doesn't mess with that because that could cause a warranty issue. You know, you start turning it up like people do, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I do the same thing. Well, I will tell you what, it has been such a pleasure to talk to you. We've been talking for a long time, and I can yeah. be honest, it, it didn't feel like it. It just felt like I was talking to an old friend. So I really appreciate, you know, spending oh, the you. time with me and telling us all about the Dayton Audio stuff, because I think that this is, it's so great to get it from the horse's mouth versus mine. So Yeah, yeah I appreciate it. I'll come on anytime. Oh, well, all right. We'll be on next week. Right, thank you. <laughs> See ya. All right. Hey, that was great. You are like a master at being on camera.